Hi, welcome to my presentation, Everywhere in One Place for Illuminate 2020. I'm Dave Sudia, and I'm going to be walking through how we are using uh, Sumo Logic's new all in observability platform and what we're really excited about, which is the future of that platform. So, who am I? I'm a senior DevOps engineer for a company called Go Spot Check that I'll walk you through in a second. And I'm a bit of a Swiss Army knife. I think anyone who's worked in this kind of role can sympathize with that. Uh, I write applications, I do security work, I do operations work, I help developers figure out the best way to deploy and observe and, and secure their software and, and kind of everything in between. And I'm a prolific Sumo Logic beta tester. I challenge anyone at Sumo Logic to find a beta that we haven't participated in the last couple of years. So uh, I, I am always seeing the next things they're doing and it's always very exciting. Let's talk a bit about Go Spot Check and, and sort of some context about what I'm going to show you. So we're a mobile field execution uh, assistance application. Field rep walks into a bar, often literally, uh, or you know, the kind of classic example I give is Pepsi has an agreement with Walgreens that the Pepsis will be in stock at eye level, and it used to be that someone would take that down on a clipboard, and now they walk in with our mobile app. They take uh, information down in an information collection mission that someone back at the central office has put together. And that goes back for near real-time business intelligence for that, that company. We have mobile devices, we have an admin portal, we have business intelligence, we have a machine vision product so that the uh, field rep can just take a picture of the cooler in the Walgreens and it, we automatically figure out what's going on in it uh, as well as other use cases. And we do workflows and notifications and, and other things that people can uh, use to take action off of that information. We have a lot of components that go into that stack. We run Kubernetes infrastructure, Rails, Go, Postgres, both that we manage ourselves and that we have managed in, in other places. We run CouchDB. We have cloud uh, functions or lambdas if you're in Amazon. We have an ML pipeline. We have a data pipeline. There's a whole lot to that. And one of our consistent challenges has been figuring out how to observe that well, how to figure out what's going on in our system and, and take action off of what we've observed. The culture uh, has always been one of, of developers taking ownership, but historically we were on Heroku, which is platform as a service. That's where the company started and grew. And as we've moved into a cloud native environment running on Kubernetes and, and other platforms, we've had to shift our culture quite a bit. When I started on my team, it was the DevOps team. And we kind of did everything except for feature development. We're now cloud ops. We, it, I, that, that name change could have been to pretty much anything, but we changed it to sort of illustrate we're not everything but feature development. We, we have our own infrastructure to run and manage now, and we're starting to push security and reliability and, and a lot of the things that we used to completely own left. Another issue that's come up is support has a seat at the table. We are moving towards continuous delivery, and I got a question from a, a support customer success and support manager a year and a half ago saying, how do we support continuous delivery? If, if things are being pushed 10 times a day, how do we know about it? And if you're canarying the, the traffic, aren't we kind of accepting all the time that 5% of our customers could have bad results? You know, what, what do we do with that? From dev to QA to support to us, how do we see our whole system to troubleshoot it? How do we zoom into the section that's in trouble? When we started this, journey into cloud native into the cloud native world we we kind of had a big rock that we landed on early on which was that open standards are worth adopting to provide flexibility and interoperability and the vendors we choose are ones who agree that's that's really critical for us because it it guides us into specific tools we choose whether it's prometheus or open tracing um, and we made that choice early on because we decided if we're going with Kubernetes, if we're going into the cloud native ecosystem, then let's look at the cloud native computing foundation and other projects sort of around it. And let's work with those tools that are designed to work together. And what we found is that they work together really well, but there was a, a delay in getting it to work well with things outside of that ecosystem. So early on, we were trying to find vendors. My team has two people on it, plus a manager who really tries hard to be an individual contributor. And we don't really have the, the person power to run all of these things, Jaeger, Prometheus, right, FluentD, like all these things ourselves. So we tried to find early vendors and Sumo Logic was a great place to send our logs. We were already sending our logs to them from 
Heroku. So that was kind of a, an, an easy win, but we, we had a hard time finding places to send our metrics and our traces. And a main reason for that was a lot of uh, places considered Prometheus metrics to be external metrics. They weren't native to the whatever platform it was. And that was a different charge. So, uh, and it was charged at a, a much different rate. Uh, if you, you know, the example I give is if you start up a Google Kubernetes engine cluster with three nodes uh, in it and you don't deploy anything, it'll cost you about $150 a month to run. If you take the Prometheus metrics in it and send them to Google Stackdriver product, which is their metrics and observability product, that'll cost about $3,500 a month. So it, it's just really cost prohibitive. The next thing we tried to do was, okay, fine. We'll run our own Prometheus. We'll run our own Jaeger. We'll run all of our own observability tools. And it was just person power prohibitive. You know, I mean, we've been doing it, but I wouldn't say we've been doing it well. And, and it's just another thing we have to check in on. So the final piece of this puzzle for us in this, in this progression has been Sumo Logic, adopting open standards. They're open standards native. They just take Prometheus metrics. They just take open traces, right? Like the, the early on, the first thing we sent to them was logs and it was through Fluent D and then through Fluent Bit. So we haven't had to change anything about the work we've done internally in our applications to send things to Sumo Logic. And that's what's been really magical about their approach to this space. So I wanna talk about why we're excited about what Sumo Logic is doing and, and the, the things they've been rolling out and are rolling out uh, in the very near future. Here's our current observability space. We have Sumo Logic for logs and for our infrastructure metrics, starting with the Kubernetes uh, metrics product that was released last Illuminate. And, and that was a real boon for, for my team to be able to see all, all of the CPU and memory and you know, node level metrics and, and cluster level metrics going over to Sumo Logic really seamlessly. And it's been really useful. But we have Grafana and Prometheus still running in our clusters um, for application metrics, because we have these custom metrics that our application developers put in. I want to know how deep this uh, Kafka, you know, queue is, or uh, kind of things like that at, at any at any given moment, right? Specific kinds of of errors that they want to track, that sort of thing. And we have database metrics for our databases that are self managed, and so those are not sort of automatically shipped over to Sumo Logic. They're they're in Prometheus, and we have our own dashboards over here that we have to go look at. We have New Relic for application metrics and our older uh, applications that came from Heroku that are primarily Rails-based. We have Jaegers for traces, but going to the, we don't run our infrastructure very well ourselves. Uh, that Jaeger feeds into an elastic search that is always ballooning and ballooning and ballooning. And so we've had to sample our trace rates and that has caused pain for our developers because They'll find an error, but then they can't go look at the trace because that was a trace that got dropped by the sampling system. We use a vendor called Ivan for managed database services and they have their own DB metrics. And then we've got static sites where we don't even have observability. And then we have Linkerd running in our cluster that's a separate Prometheus from our, our main one. And it's just, it's all over the place. It's, it's not very convenient for getting a single pane of glass and being able to see the system as a whole. Here's the future of our observability. It's just Sumo Logic. And that's what I'm really excited about is that we're gonna be able to take that entire system and put it in one place for our developers, for QA, for us, for support. It, I, I'm, I'm very excited about it. How are we gonna do that? Well, Kubernetes generates Prometheus metrics. Ivan, the database management service, generates Prometheus metrics. Our apps generate Prometheus and open tracing. The service mesh generates Prometheus, the static sites, we're gonna be able to instrument with open tracing. And all of that feeds into a project called Open Telemetry. Open Telemetry is a, a product, a project, an open source project that is attempting to bring everything into one house, uh, sort of as a Rosetta Stone of all these observability data points. Whether you're using, you know, just for tracing, Zipkin or Open Tracing or Open Telemetry or any of these standards, Jaeger. Uh, it, it's compatible with all of those both in and out. So you can sort of bring in and move things around at will as you need to. And here's why that's important. There's no waiting. There's no waiting for Sumo to make an Ivan collector or Ivan to make a Sumo exporter or Sumo to make a Jaeger adapter or APM company X to support gRPC or Go or Prometheus. You know, one of the in early things we ran into adopting all those open standards and sort of 
future-proofing ourselves as much as possible at the beginning of our process was we went to some of these uh, proprietary APM companies and it was like, oh, well, we don't support Go yet. Oh, well, now we support Go, but we don't support, support gRPC yet. And we've always been waiting. And that was one of the things that drove us to open standards as well. Again, all these things play nicely with each other. You have gRPC, Prometheus just works. You can just instrument your application and get information. And so the, the really cool thing about Sumo Logic's approach, again, and the reason I'm here is because we don't have to wait. We can just instrument however we want, and then everything flows through and ends up in Sumo Logic at the end. Here's an example of what that looks like, right? On the left side, we have without the open telemetry collector, which is the, the, the tool that facilitates moving things in and moving things out. I have my database metrics that have nowhere to go because they're difficult to get to because they're not in my system. I have Ambassador, which is an API gateway sending Prometheus metrics out. I have applications sending Prometheus metrics out, but also traces and they're going into Jaeger. But then I've got Sumo Logic's tracing system and I don't have a way to get it to them. With the open telemetry collector, everything routes through this Rosetta Stone in one side, out the other. And not only can I send things to Sumo Logic, but I can send them anywhere else too. I can still have them going to my regular Prometheus backend. I can still have them going to a Jaeger backend. While we've been working on the tracing product with Sumo Logic as, a, as an early partner, I was able to keep both our existing Jaeger system and the Sumo Logic system going at the same time so that we could do a real strong evaluation of both and we weren't relying on an alpha product to, to handle production things while still sending our production information over to this product so we could evaluate it. Here's the other critical piece for me. Sumo Logic showed us open telemetry. Early on, like I said, we tried to future-proof ourselves. We jumped kind of far ahead of what any vendor had, was supporting at the time. And the experience so far has been, we would go to vendors, we'd look at their product or they'd be talking to us, we'd be looking at the information about them and there'd be no support. We, you know, we, we were always asking the vendor, well, when are you gonna support this? And, and often be like, what is that? We, we were ahead. And this is the first time we haven't been ahead. We were you know, still working in the space, bringing up our observability infrastructure. And the folks at Sumo Logic were like, hey, have you seen the open telemetry collector? Here's how you configure it. We're even contributing to it. We're working on it. It's the first time that a, 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 a partner has been ahead of us. And that was, that was exciting because being on as small a team as I am, we have to go and figure these things out, but we don't really want to. I'd rather be having someone tell me the easy, the easy path forward. And that's been, that's been what's happening. Sumo Logic is ahead of the curve right now. And, and it's that that really creates the excitement for me. I see my job getting easier. I see the things I'm able to offer my team getting better. And, and it's the future's bright there. So let's look at what some of this actually looks like, right? If we, if we bring it all together. Here, I've got an app dashboard for one of our internal applications. I basically ported this over from uh, Linkerd, which sort of generates dashboards pretty immediately for you, but I was able to very easily translate those queries to Prometheus into metrics queries for Sumo Logic and bring this dashboard over. Uh, exporting the metrics from Prometheus in my cluster over to Sumo Logic was pretty equally easy. It was a real quick addition to our, how we deployed the Sumo Logic collector, and then we just deployed it and it came on over. Here's another one for an application uh, called Bifrost that we have that similar uh, port over of the Linkerd dashboard that gives us these application specific metrics. But this is actually from the Explore tab uh, that was revealed last year as part of the Kubernetes product. And so looking at them both, you'll see that this one, we're just sort of looking at a regular dashboard. This one in the upper left, it says dashboards Bifrost because Here's, this is in the Explore tab using the deep stack linking that Sumo Logic offers so that we can connect our metrics to the metrics that Sumo Logic already creates and, and brings over and the dashboards they create. So this gives just really quick seamless switches. Here I've just gone up to that dashboards drop down and changed it into the infrastructure metrics. So now I have the stuff that I really care about. We have the stuff that application developers really care about right next to each other. From there, I can go into the new uh, Entity Explorer by clicking on a pod un under the infrastructure information. And 
I struggled to find any things that were going wrong. So you're just going to see a lot of green stuff that's working really well. But um, the the use case here would be if one of those pods was red, I could hop in here and see you know what's going on with this one, right? And over on the right under the uh, Entity Explorer under Troubleshoot Links, there's a little purple icon there that takes us right into our distributed tracing for that pod. And I can see exactly what's going on, follow specific links. And then if I clicked on any one of these bars, I'd be taken right over into more contextual information. I can jump straight to the logs for this deployment uh, or and, and this on this pod, I can see exactly what's going on. This is the beginning of the transparent pane of glass. And again, what I'm excited about is that the tools are there now. We have to go do a little bit more implementation. You saw on an earlier dashboard, there were panes that had no data, but that's because we don't have that thing instrumented for outbound metrics yet, right? But like that work is not critically hard to do when we have a place to send it, when we have a meaningful reason to do it, when knowing that once we've got the information someplace, it's gonna be quick and easy to get around and analyze it and see what's going on, not just for me, not just for the developer, but anyone in our organization who needs to go look at it. Key thing for me, and this is why I'm so excited is we're gonna have every event, every metric, every log, every trace, every view, every user, everywhere in one place. It's the first time we've been able to do that in the two and a half years that we've been in the cloud native space and it's great. I'm Dave Sudia. You can find me pretty much anywhere, everywhere at, at the development, and I'm happy to take questions and answer them.